Cellulose is the world's most abundant organic polymer, and it is the main structural component of most plant cells. It's used to make a lot of things that we use daily, like clothing, paper, and even cellophane wrap. The polymer of cellulose is a long string of individual D-glucose units. On its own, glucose is normally very easy to digest, but the way that the glucose units are connected in cellulose, it makes it really hard for a lot of mammals to break it down. In the production of cellophane and rayon, which is basically a cellulose fiber that's regenerated from various sources, it's necessary to first dissolve the cellulose. There are actually a handful of solvents that are capable of dissolving cellulose, but I think that Schweitzer's reagent is probably the easiest to make. Schweitzer's reagent is a complex that's formed between copper hydroxide and ammonia, and when this is in water, it's capable of dissolving cellulose. What we need to make this Schweitzer's reagent is copper hydroxide, which we made in a previous video, and aqueous ammonia, which is also known as ammonium hydroxide. One unfortunate thing is that I found that it's really important to use concentrated ammonium hydroxide because the dilute stuff that you can find as cleaner in stores just really doesn't work very well. On top of the ingredients that we need to make the actual Schweitzer's reagent, we also need a source of cellulose, something like paper or cotton. Anyway, to get things started, we pour in about 100 milliliters of aqueous ammonia into a beaker. Then directly into the aqueous ammonia, we pour in about 2 grams of copper hydroxide. You can see that initially it's a nice light blue color, but as we get things stirring and the copper hydroxide dissolves, it slowly becomes darker and darker. Just after a few minutes, nearly all of the copper hydroxide has dissolved, and we're left with a very nice dark blue solution. What's happening here is the copper hydroxide forms a dark blue complex with the aqueous ammonia. The complex that's formed is actually the Schweitzer's reagent, and it's chemically known as tetraamine copper hydroxide. Now we're ready to test out its ability to dissolve cellulose, and to do this, I try it out on a little bit of cotton. I try to dip some in and let it sit there for a bit to see how much it dissolves, and you'll notice it doesn't look like it does too much. One thing to realize is that although the solution is capable of dissolving cellulose, it's not going to do it super quickly, and it's not going to be like you're dissolving cotton candy in water. In theory, if I held the cotton here for a few minutes, the submerged part would eventually disappear, but I ended up just dropping everything in. You'll notice here that it looks a little bit choppy as it stirs, and this is because the stir bar is hitting the cotton as it goes around. After a few minutes though, the cotton should fully dissolve, and the stirring should get back to normal. For the amount of Schweitzer's reagent that I made, we should be able to dissolve around 2 grams of cellulose, and so far I've only put in around 1. To try to dissolve as much cellulose as possible, I dump in another large cotton ball, and this should get us close to saturation. After a few minutes of stirring, everything has dissolved, and you can see we're left with a fairly viscous solution. The next step is to precipitate our cellulose, and to do this, I suck up some of the solution into a syringe. The solution is still pretty viscous, and there are little bits of cellulose floating around, so pulling it up into the syringe is a pretty big pain. Anyway, I eventually get a fairly decent amount, and I decide that it's good enough. To precipitate the cellulose, it's very simple, and all we need to do is to shoot it out into a dilute acid solution. It doesn't really matter too much which acid you use, and a 10% solution of hydrochloric acid, nitric acid, or sulfuric acid all work equally as well. So when I'm ready, I start to shoot out my cellulose solution into 10% hydrochloric acid. You can see that the moment it hits the acid, the cellulose precipitates. Once everything's been shot out of the syringe, I stir it up using a glass pipette, and you can see that we're left with a lot of stringy cellulose. The reason that the cellulose precipitates is the hydrochloric acid reacts with the ammonia, and this destroys the Schweitzer's reagent complex. As long as you see this blue color, it means that there's Schweitzer's reagent present, and we want to stir things up until most or all of the blue color disappears. Just after a few minutes of stirring, we should be left with nearly white cellulose fibers.
I go on to make more Schweitzer's reagent and I want to test out dissolving different sources of cellulose like paper. I just take some generic white printing paper, I tear it up into smaller pieces and I throw it into the Schweitzer's reagent. When we initially add the paper, it doesn't really dissolve and it actually takes quite a long time to dissolve everything. The main reason for this is that compared to the cotton balls, the surface area of the paper is much less, so it just takes a lot longer to dissolve. Eventually though, just like the cotton, everything does dissolve and we're ready to precipitate it. I come up with a much smarter and much more obvious method of getting the liquid into the syringe, and this time I just pour it in. Anyway, once we're ready, just like before, I shoot it into a 10% hydrochloric acid solution. You notice that it actually looks pretty much the same as it did when we dissolved the cotton, and we just make a lot of cellulose spaghetti. Like before, I stirred everything around until I get mostly white fibers, and most of the Schweitzer's reagent has been neutralized. Anyway, I put that aside for now, and I move on to my next test, where I try to dissolve some clothing. I cut a small strip off from a 100% cotton shirt, and I chop it into small pieces and add it to the Schweitzer's reagent. It was really slow to dissolve, and I think I had to leave it overnight. So once everything dissolved, I add it to a syringe like before, and I shoot it into some 10% hydrochloric acid. This time though, what's interesting is it doesn't really form the stringy cellulose like it did in the previous examples. I think this is because to dissolve everything I had to leave it overnight, and the alkaline conditions actually started to chop up the cellulose polymer. So instead of having nice long cellulose fibers, I'm left with a lot more smaller and shorter ones. When I pour in the rest of what remained in the beaker, you can see that it's a lot of fluffy stuff and not very long fibers. After letting it sit in the acid for a while and stirring it occasionally, I'm left with a lot of white fluff. I filter the cellulose off just using a coffee filter and a funnel. After everything's been filtered, I lay out the cellulose to dry. As one final test, I try to see if it's able to dissolve some fresh sawdust. I put in a couple grams of sawdust, and in theory, it should be about 50% cellulose. Like with the clothing, it's very slow to dissolve, so I had to leave it overnight, and also since it's only 50% cellulose, there's going to be a lot of undissolved material. So just like in all the other runs, I put it into the syringe, and I squish it out into an acid solution. The cellulose that we used was sawdust, and it wasn't long fibers, and on top of this it had to sit in the alkaline solution overnight, so the particles of cellulose were really small. I didn't have enough acid to neutralize all of the ammonia, so I had to add in a little bit more HCl. Once the acid is added, we stir things up and then let things settle, and you can see we have very small bits of cellulose floating around. As we let it stand, the small bits slowly float to the top of the solution. When we look at the bottom of the beaker that we dissolved it in, we can see there's a lot of undissolved material that remains. So just like before, to separate off the cellulose, I filter it through a coffee filter. Once everything's been filtered through, I leave out the nice dirty brown cellulose to dry. As just one final test, I prepare some fresh Schweitzer's reagent, I dissolve some cotton in it, and I pour it out onto a watch glass. What I'm trying to test here is to see what we're left with if we let the solution completely dry out. As the solution evaporates, so does the ammonia, and our Schweitzer's reagent complex slowly falls apart. Because of this, when everything's fully dry, we're left with an intimate mixture of copper hydroxide and cellulose. To separate the cellulose from the copper hydroxide, I add the copper hydroxide to a little bit of water, and then I pour in some hydrochloric acid. The copper hydroxide should react with the hydrochloric acid to form soluble copper chloride, and the cellulose shouldn't be affected. After we add a little bit more hydrochloric acid and stir things around, we're left with a slightly green solution of copper chloride with cellulose floating around. The cellulose is separated by vacuum filtration. I wash it with a little bit of water, and then I put it out on a piece of paper to dry.
So this used to be a cotton ball, but now we're left with a bunch of cellulose powder. I transferred it to a small vial for storage, and I'm not really sure what I'll do with it, but I figure maybe in the future it might come in handy. On a piece of paper, I laid out the dried samples of cellulose that I got from each source. Some of them have a little bit of a green color due to the presence of copper chloride, and they were all quite brittle. Evidenced by the fact that they're still slightly green, I clearly didn't wash the cellulose well enough, and some of the leftover hydrochloric acid might have caused the cellulose to become as brittle as you see it here. I think in general though, even if I did wash out all of the acid, I think the product would still be pretty brittle. When we look at the end, we can see that I actually did get a little bit of cellulose from the wood, but it's pretty brown and impure. In the end though, I wasn't really planning on making any real proper rayon products, and I was just really interested in the idea of dissolving cellulose. Again, I'd like to extend a big thanks to everyone who supports me on Patreon. All of my videos are shared 24 hours before with all of my Patreon supporters before I post it to YouTube, and everyone who supports $5 or more per video actually gets their name at the end as you see here. I would also like to reiterate that I only charge patrons for the long in-depth videos, and none of the short ones are ever charged to anyone. Everyone gets those for free. Anyway, that's it for now. I'm not 100% sure what the next video is, but it should probably be posted later this week.